Brooklyn, New York, summer 1989. Over four consecutive weekends, a convoy of cars leaves the Al Farouk Mosque. A surveillance team tails them. After receiving a tip about a possible bomb threat, the FBI and New York police are investigating Mustafa Shalabi and his recruitment center. The convoy drives 75 miles east onto Long Island. It stops here at a firing range in the town of Calperton. An FBI photographer parks at a distance and snaps these pictures. El Said Nosser and his comrades produce an array of semi-automatic weapons, including AK-47 assault rifles. The five men, all trained by Ali Mohammed, spend hours firing their weapons. After a month, the bomb plot never materializes. The surveillance ends. Authorities make no arrests. The men have not broken any law, and at the time, terrorism is not the top priority for U.S. law enforcement. There was something that happened overseas. There was no undercovers, there was no wiretaps. The, the ability to do that against a religious organization would have been incredibly difficult. Fall 1989. Ali Mohammed finishes his three-year tour at Fort Bragg. Even though his name has been on a watch list, he is sworn in as a U.S. citizen. Now 37 years old, Mohammed returns home to his wife here in Santa Clara, California. And he begins to work on an assignment that reflects the growing ambition of Osama bin Laden, building a terror cell on the 